All through the summer of 1929, there had been ominous rumblings. For months, unemployment had been rising. Automobile sales and department store revenues had fallen off sharply. Across the South and West, farms were failing in record numbers. And still on Wall Street, the delirious optimism continued, undimmed. You had, from beginning the mid-20s on, an accelerating wave of speculation, which then became self-perpetuating. The market was going up, and the expectation that it would go up more caused it to go up more. But then comes the day when those expectations, something changes those expectations, and everybody wants to get out. And that is not a matter of weeks or months. That's a matter then of days. The crash comes very fast. With the onset of the Great Depression, lifestyles changed for almost every American. As adults lost their jobs, there were no unemployment benefits to help pay mortgages and no social security checks to put food on the table. It became difficult for parents to provide for their families. These tough times changed the definition of childhood in every way imaginable. John's father was let go soon after the stock market crash in October 1929. However, he was one of the lucky ones. He was able to get a job quickly as an electrician for his brother's business. John's mother also began teaching piano for extra income during this time period. Even so, the wages and their total salaries were much lower, hardly enough for a family of five. During this time period, it was common for kids to enter the workforce because sometimes they could be hired in positions in which their parents could not, and obviously money was always tight. My grandfather began working on his uncle's farm in Higgsville, Long Island when he was only eight years old. He earned only 10 cents an hour, but worked about 60 hours a week in the summer. His parents never pressured him to go out and get a job. He simply understood that if he wanted anything more than food, clothing, and a roof above his head, he would have to put some effort towards an income of his own. He saved up his money for his first bike, a 28-wheeler, and a radio. He also put aside a small amount of spending money for little things such as his first date, two 25-cent tickets to a movie. Being employed as an eight-year-old meant that there was much less time to focus on school. On top of that, the failing national economy meant that government funding of education was very limited. Schools began to teach only basic academic courses, with no funds for classes like art and music. However, as my grandpa grew into adolescence, he began to value education more and more. It became clear that in order to support a family and be more financially successful than his own family had been during the Depression, he would need a good education. So, he joined the Navy after Pearl Harbor was attacked, motivated by the dream of a federally funded college education after the war. Chronic poverty came to be the cause of many marital disputes during the Great Depression. Luckily, my grandfather's parents rarely spoke with their children about financial problems. They seemed to take a different approach. Rather than letting the difficult times lead to disagreement and tension, his parents and his entire family became closer as they struggled together. Because his parents had to work long hours in order to make a sufficient income, family time was limited, but therefore also immensely cherished and never taken for granted. Relationships between parents and children changed. As men lost their jobs, wives and kids not only had to make up for the lost income, but they also took on a new emotional role in the family. Fathers were seen as less reliable and the traditional family structure began to evolve. Families interacted and behaved in whatever fashion would help them survive, not always in the traditional patriarchal fashion that was expected. Children had to learn to deal with the stress, depression, and emotional trauma that accompanied such financial hardships. At times, kids even consoled their own parents. While such a childhood came with emotional scars, it also arguably made children of the Great Depression more independent and more prepared to take on the real world. Poor old Granny, I laughed at all his words. I thought he was a bitter man, he spoke of women's ways. 
Love is blind and you're far too kind